Hello, this is Josh Spicer from GameWisdom.com. I hope you enjoy this Let's Play series on Clockwork Empires. Hello everybody! Welcome to the first episode of my Clockwork Empires Let's Play. This is of course the City Builder slash Dwarf Fortress-esque take from Gaslam Games, makers of Dungeons of Dreadmoor. If you're a returning visitor to the YouTube channel, then you've probably seen many videos of the game during its early access life. But it's finally in 1.0, and it's time to finally cut loose and check it out. Before we begin, please keep in mind that Gaslamp has said that they're planning on doing post-release support, so what you see here may not be indicative of the current version of the game. Alright, let's get to it. First thing, we'll create a new world. That way we'll have some fresh biomes to check out. While we're waiting for this to go through, please keep in mind that because this is a game built on just how long you can survive for, it means we don't really have a set schedule for uh, record length. So we're going to aim for, I'm going to say between 30 and 45 minutes a session and we'll play it by ear there. This one may be this first one may be a little bit on the longer side just because we're going to be explaining things as we go through it. It should be just about done. There we go. All right, here's our world. Some areas are blocked off because we need a greater population. It's basically divided into like easy, medium, and then these hard ones. You need to get at least 50 colonists for the medium, and then 100 for the harder ones. I did this during the early access, so that's why I have the second tier unlocked. But normally it would just be these temperate biomes. So what do we have to start with? I figure let's go with with a regular and regular for our first play. We won't be needing the tutorial, hopefully. And as you can see, reasonably the same biome except for swamp here, fresh water here. Yeah, let's go with this. While we're waiting for the game to load up, if this is your first time seeing anything related to Clockwork Empires, this is a city builder combining Lovecraftian and Steampunkist-esque themes. We need to raise our colony up and hopefully not drive our colonists into the waiting arms of Yogg-Sagoth or Cthulhu. Let's hope the game decides to load. <laughs> there we go, I think it's doing it. And this is just the first load to generate the actual level, so probably take a little bit longer than when we come back to this. All right, here we are. We're in the frontier. Here's our crew. Oh, the box laying on her head, apparently. So here's our main screen. We have the mini-map up here. We have commands to show the time, whether we show building walls, increased game speed, which we will definitely be turning on, pause and of course the handy help book. Up here we have our commands, the overseers which are the people who we're going to command to do stuff. Offices, workshops, housing, our stockpile or our commodities. These are all the jobs we have currently queued up. We can come here to delete them if there's a job we don't want to get done anymore. 
we have the factions that we're aware of right now and here's our population right now we have two laborers and seven overseers we can have six workplaces stocked we always going to have one overseer whose job it is to basically do the grunt work over here we have our disturbance Basically, the more we build, the more we're going to upset the land and maybe cause something bad to happen. And of course, our food. The different classes of colonists will require or want different tiers of food. If you look over here, I'm well, now on the grass. They're not going to eat grass, unfortunately. The bushel of sausages. We have, it is overseer preferred, while bread is laborer preferred. And of course we have stuff like bullets. These two have, I can zoom in here, have question marks because they are laborers. Now then, down here we have our general commands of chopping trees down for wood, mining surface nodes for ore, forge for food, and clear the terrain to make it cleaner so that we don't have all this stuff lying around. These are the number of summits we have currently available. And down here are all of our building and modules. And we'll be coming back here quite often. Now first thing I want to come is here. These are our zones and constructions. You're going to be most likely flattening the terrain to start with. This makes the land able to have buildings constructed on them. And I generally like a good flat area to start with. There we go. That should be more than enough for right now. We can set up stockpiles. This is where they'll place commodities. Graveyard for when people die. The airship mast to tell them to drop our goods in this location instead of just dropping stuff willy-nilly and hitting our little friend Cordelia Boot in the head. We have gabins for fortifications, landmines, lamps, and of course we can plant some shrubbery to make things look a little bit more beautiful. Here are the types of crops. We'll have to unlock the rest but we're going to start with maize. If we begin in the other biomes, we'll start with a different basic crop. And over here are all the modules we're going to be build. I know this may look daunting at the start, but it will make sense over time. And then here are our buildings, separated into the workshops where we'll construct stuff, the foreign outreach for basically doing stuff in the world, frontier ex exploitation for deal using our local resources to better our land, the public services to help our people, and of course housing so that people will come and want to live in our lovely colony. Now as you can see there's quite a lot on the map at the start. If you're ever unsure of something just put your mouse over and the little info bar in the bottom right will show up. Apparently we have gold and we got something very mysterious. Wow, we got mysterious stuff right from the get-go. That is actually not good. Well, it's entertaining for you folks, not good for me. Now, one last thing before we unpause. The Overseer menu is going to be the one of the most important things for you to look at. This is how you're going to manage your colony. Overseers have their little titles here. Each overseer can have four laborers assigned to them. If we click on them, you can see their traits. As you can see, these traits will affect what they're best at. And then down here are their skills. These are the jobs that they're either already good with or the ones you want to generally give them. Here's their mood. Mood will fluctuate depending upon what's going on. Are they eating right? Are they having enough food? Are they having enough sleep? I'm sorry. And other factors. Now, because they're happy, this is their work schedule. Normally, they will always take off an hour for a break, but if they're unhappy, they'll take off additional time. This is the reason why you want to keep their um, workstations clean and 
add decor decorative items. Here's our unassigned worker pool. Again, these are the laborers. When you first start playing Clockwork Empires, you have three basic things you need to get going. You want food, you want a kitchen to process the food, and you want to get the basic building elements or planks so you can start constructing buildings like housing. So that's what I do pretty much from the get-go. First, we place down a cornfield. We may need more as time goes on, but we shall see. Yeah, this is good. And for anything that you build that needs to be worked, you must assign an overseer to. Now, as you can see, all of our overseers only have a one in farming, which means we're not going to get any bonuses on this front. Now, I'm also looking to see that any related traits that make life better for them. That's underneath their mood, but no. Now, because we have two stone workers, and this guy is going to be higher up, we'll assign Ironlock as our farmer. What I like to do is put a labor. I like to fill up the farm first before anyone else, simply so we can get a full crop being worked on and hopefully getting the food we need. I'm also going to assign, we have no one who's going to be good at military, so that's going to be a trouble. So we're going to unpause things. Isaiah here is going to be our farmer. And whoever's flattening, I'm going to give him a labor just so we can speed things up. Then we're going to slow things down just a tad while we're letting things get going. Oh, they're hugging. So the second thing I like to do is get a stockpile just to organize our supplies. There we go. Now people will start moving our commodities over. Like I said, the first things we want to do, we're going to need these three buildings in order to get the basic building blocks of our colony. The carpentry workshop, the kitchen, and the ceramics workshop. The bigger you build your workshop, or any building in particular, it will increase the number of resources that it's going to need. Ideally, we want to start small and maybe come back and build bigger ones as time goes on. So as you can see, we're starting to get some room going. So... And we can also go like this. So you can see the blueprint has been increased, but this should be good enough. Hit done, and now we can assign modules. These are the elements that are going to make the building basically do its functions. You can see, I'm going to pause for another second, certain modules are going to decrease the building quality, others are going to raise it up. The higher the quality of the building, essentially the happier the people are going to be working in there. Now most decorative items are going to require what's called brick brac. That's that little trunk looking thing that says 4 right there. Brick brac needs to be constructed using a decor workbench, and different workshops will use different resources. For now though, we just wanted to build essentially the basic element, which is a door and a carpentry workbench. Each module in a building will allow you to work it to produce something. We'll probably build more as time goes on, but this is more than enough for right now. We are going to need lumber and we are going to need stone. So. This will assign someone to start. We also have a supply of clay here. 
clay is going to be of use later on, but for right now, we can just let it go. We do have forageables, including fungus. And we have mining nodes right here. This will be used later on when we want to set up a underground mining operation, allowing us to get resources from a singular source and maybe discover mysterious and evil things. We'll speed things up. Oh, I got an achievement. <laughs> I'm also going to start building the kitchen. That should be, I think, good enough. We'll need planks, which will be constructed at our carpentry bench. Mm, yeah, I think that should be big enough for right now. We'll need a stove. Generally, you want one uh, resource producing module per person working in a building. So for right now, I can just use the one. And of course, a door. Now they will not be able to construct that right now, so they're just gonna leave that alone. It's their rest break, so unfortunately we can't do anything. You can see there are little conversations they're having. Now that should be enough to start constructing. And right now we're just waiting for things to get going. You can see they're starting to t uh, seed the land. We got a little maize growing. Now another important building you want to get early is the barracks. This is where our militia will be able to train and protect our lovely colonists from the threats. You really don't need a big building for this. As we're going to mainly just house weapons here. And our first workshop is done. We're going to pause again. And we're going to see who we can put in here. So we got a little bit of an interesting decision here. L Steam Whistle is a level 2 carpenter, which means they'll be able to do things a little bit quicker. But our friend August Crow here is Wood Touch, which means they'll gain a 25% bonus for learning woodworking. Yeah, I think we're going to make August here our carpenter. Now, I don't need two people in the carpentry shop just yet. And you can see the little symbol here that shows what their best job is right now. But that will change as they level up. Since she'll be our... Uh, let's just assign for the farm. Farm is always the good um, go-to if you need to assign a labor or something. All right, she's chopping our trees down. Here's the event window. And they'll be sleeping indoors. One last building we're going to need to construct is the 
ceramics workshop. This will allow us to use bricks, which is what the overseer homes will need. And again, we need overseers to perform tasks. Alright, well, everyone's happy so far. Alright, the barracks is done. We need to assign someone here. Yeah, so we don't feel like we'll give that to her. Hmm. We will be needing the naturalist at some point. And she's going to be our cook. I guess it's going to be Smuggler here for right now. He is turned into a red coat, and we assign laborers to him. He'll train them into being part of our army. These are the kinds of guns we can build. We'll need to construct lockers and have the bullets in order for them to use them. But we now have defense. Alright, this is done. This will allow us to construct the modules and resources. Planks we'll be using for building a lot of stuff. Paper stacks will be used in our offices. Mine shorings will be used in our mine. And the assembly workbench lets us build even more stuff. So first off, we're going to assign, we're going to tell them to build 11 of those. That will be enough for our kitchen. We could also set up smaller stockpiles near their respective buildings. The first of many planks is done. And of course the game saves. Let me see, we are about 24 minutes, I think, into this play. And we have some animals here. Only our naturalists can hunt. Once they build the kitchen, I want to get a trade office up, and then the ceramics. And we do need to build housing for our people too. <laughs> Alright, that should be enough lumber to construct the kitchen. If you ever want to see what you have, just click on the commodities line here. Nobody here is good at construction, so it's taking them extra long to get this going. But now that that's finished, we'll build a little trade office. Nothing too fancy. See our disturbance has been going up. The kitchen is done. So definitely give this to Lenora. No one has any traits. 
they'll construct the stove in the next day. But it's time to get some housing up. be needing a lot of those as we move on. Now for food, as you can see we need to cook food that's both good for overseers and good for our laborers. So we have some fungus stew. You can also press shift to quickly speed this up. Mushrooms. And we have corn coming. Once this is done, which will, we will need more lumber. We'll be able to get more laborers. And it will probably be a good idea to build a second stove. As you can see, there's quite a bit more things to build. Alright, so we make this place better, it'll attract more people so we can sell. You can see their bar is a little bit different color because they are higher quality. like there was an event. Now we look over here. We are running out of sausages. going to need more as time goes on. Just put that right next to each other. And now everyone is sleeping. Okay. Uh oh, 
bayonets are here. Um, we shall not tolerate. That also means... Oh, and a beautiful day. I want to take one of my farmers off and turn him into a brown coat. In fact, we should probably do that because it looks like we may be dealing with bandits. The good news is that is almost done. We're going to build an assembly workbench. This will allow us to construct a variety of modules. Alright, the fungus stew, we are out of that. So I'm going to make... some sausages. Oh, we don't have that. Okay, let's try some farmer's stew. Alright, with the Labor of Bunkhouse done, by itself it will add uh, two more laborers. But if we enhance it, we'll get more laborers in that house. So the first thing that I want to do, come over here, we're going to add two windows, and we want three beds. We can of course add more, but they will not add anything else in terms of quality. Now construct those cots. This is why we need the assembly bench over here. Looks like we need more lumber. Alright, so in order to set this up, let's cancel that. Come back over here to module. And just place it down like that. Now someone will come over and set that up. We have some fancier stew. This will keep them happy. From the workbench we can build a whole lot of other stuff. Let's see, that seemed Improvised musket locker, which would be the next tier, but will require ammo. We will get a few more laborers coming in tomorrow. I'll be assigning one to the kitchen and probably a few to the farms. We'll need some cots. And there's some lovely mushrooms here. Food-wise, we're doing okay. We got food for the laborers, and we got food for the overseers. probably time to build our final starting workshop and that is the ceramics. This doesn't need to be too big. Mm. We 
It should actually... I may have made that a little too small there. Let's try this again. Yeah, that should be enough. Got some traders coming in. And our beds are starting to come as well. Uh-oh. Oh, now they're getting excited. Traders will bring good stuff, which we can then trade with based on what our commodities are. He's building some beds. Once they're all in, let's see what they're offering. Mm, nothing we really need at the moment. Yeah, we're, we're good. Can we get rid of that? What are they missing? Planks. If we want, we can set a standing order so that they will always have this amount of planks available. Let's check our time. We're about 40 minutes into this play. Once our next labor, our first pool laborers arrive, I think that'll be a good place to call it. Now, to make that place higher quality, we're going to need some decorative items. And again, if we want decoration, we will need to use bric-a-brac. Good. There's a lot here to make use of. We got a lot of clay. Uh oh. It looks like we got some fish people coming. Okay, and just set our fungus up. And our people are now having some beds to sleep in. We should be getting some more people in now. Uh, these items will need to be built. We can of course use booze. And it looks like we got some animals messing with things. As you can see, we're going to be getting four laborers very shortly. And I will assign them to the kitchen. There we go. Immigrants are here. Uh oh. And we got bandits. Okay, so first. I'm going to assign two to the farm, one to the kitchen, and mm. do we want one there? Ideally, we'll eventually want to fill everybody up. Yeah, again, when in doubt, fill up the farm. Now that we have a second person, they'll be able to go through our basic food a lot quicker. What the 
hell? Apparently the fish people are chasing one of the traders. Well, it's not my problem. Sorry, guy. Okay. So they're constructing that. Build the core workbench. And depending upon where you place the core workbench will determine what resources you'll be able to use. Ideally, we want to have lots of processed food and a steady supply of the basic one that we can use to brew or cook with. As our farmers improve, they'll be able to do this a lot quicker. As you can see. So what I'm going to do is set this to a standing order. I want to make sure that we always have this amount of food being in our stockpile. If there is, then they won't do it. If, they, if we're missing it, then they'll produce it. Now a few of our brown coats have been promoted. We can also send a squad to go to a spot. Thankfully we have a lot of stuff here. And as you can see with all the laborers working the farm, it's going to get done a lot quicker. Now there is one more tier of food we'll have to deal with once we get the upper class people, but that probably won't be for several episodes. What? I'm not sure what she's doing. Okay. Sometimes your people tend to wander off and do things on their own. <laughs> but we should be keeping them somewhat happy. They got good food. We just need better beds. Alright everyone, go to sleep. The overseers are picky, they will not sleep in lower class beds, which is why they need a home of their own. Doesn't look like we're getting attacked. What's our time? 45 minutes? Alright, I think this is probably going to be a good as time as ever to wrap up the play. At least part one. Like I said, we're not done with Clockwork Empires, not by a long shot. For our next play, when this is done saving, we will finish the Ceramics Workshop and begin getting some middle tier stuff going, including more Overseers to do more work and a naturalist to start exploring the land. But that's going to do it for now. If you have any questions about the game, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Of course, if you enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And once again, I'm Josh Spicer from GameWisdom.com. Hope you're enjoying the start of this Let's Play of Clockwork Empires, and I will see you all next time with our next episode. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, share with your friends. It always helps out. For daily posts on all manner of game design and industry topics, check out game-wisdom.com. To support the site and everything that I do, be sure to check out the Patreon campaign. If we can hit goals, it will mean more content for everyone to enjoy, and I'll be able to support myself and my household. If you want to follow me, you can find me on Twitter at GWBicer for updates throughout the day and random thoughts from me. 
And lastly, you can find me on Twitch right over there at GW Bicer for daily streams most nights around 10 Eastern. Thanks again for watching the video, and be sure to check out more great content coming to the Game Wisdom channel real soon.